Hey everyone, I'm Etienne, I'm the CTO of Commodore, and I'm going to talk to you today about tracking changes in distributed systems and the dark side of changes. So who am I? I'm the CTO and co-founder of Commodore, a startup building the first Kubernetes native travel shooting platform. I'm a really big believer in dev empowerment and basically moving fast and shift left movement. In my previous works, I worked for eBay, Forter, and Rookout and I have quite a lot of back-end and infra-related infra experience. Also, I'm a really big uh, Kubernetes, Kubernetes fan. So the agenda for your today meeting, so first of all, I'm going to talk to you about why should you care about changes and, and what change in your environment. Then I'm going to try to narrow it down what changes do I mean and, and what changes are super risky in today's modern environments. Later, I'm going to talk about why is it so hard to find out what change in your system. We're going to talk about the future of changes tracking. And lastly, I'm going to try to give you a few helpful tips on how you can reduce the, the pain of basically tracking your changes in today's modern systems. So first of all, why should you care about changes? Uh, we talked a little bit about uh, tracing and like the, the cost of downtime and microservices. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I don't think that I'm saying something new to anyone here, but issues happen on an hourly basis for some companies. It can be even per minute. And it, when I say issues, it derives from complete system downtime to small issues in your staging or like a bug or anything else. 85% of all incidents can be traced to a system change. And that means that someone somewhere in the organization changed something and now your application is having problems. And I will say that most troubleshooting time is focused around that particular area of finding out what's the root cause, what, what happened in your system that might explain the symptoms that you're currently experiencing. And those symptoms can, like I said, can be like a complete downtime or a bug in, in your UI. Okay, so, so I, I keep saying changes, but when I'm saying changes, what do I really mean? So this talk in specifically is, is going to be more around the system-wide changes. And that is, second. yeah, can you see my screen? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. so <clears throat> sorry about that. So when I say changes and system changes, what do I really mean? I mean things like code deployment, which is like the first thing that come to mind, but also infra changes. So think about changing the security group on AWS, configuration changes, feature flex with tools like Clang Darkly and Split IO, job changes in Jenkins, so in GoCD or in any other like job platform, DM migration, third party changes. This lecture in particular is, I'm not going to talk about like different usage or like data changes. So sometimes your application is experiencing downtime because uh, something in the user behavior changed, maybe sent uh, other kind of data or a big load on your system. But in this talk, I'm not going to zoom in on those issues. And like I said, like most changes originated from, are, are originated from like system changes and note those kind of changes. Okay, so, so I, I hope I convince you and maybe you already know that like changes is, are important. When you try to solve an issue, you are a detective and basically you try to figure out what change that can explain like the problem you are facing. So why is it so hard to find what change in your system? So today modern stack or, or you, you can refer it as like haystack is, is very, very complex and Chime said it like perfectly. It includes a lot of third parties, uh, services such as O0, your cloud providers, and dozens of different REST APIs that your application is basically dependent upon for running correctly. More than that, we took like the huge monolith that we had in the old days, and, and we broke it into lambdas, into Kubernetes, into dozens, hundreds, or even thousands of small microservices that are running around. More than that, the change frequency has changed dramatically, and organization, like modern good organization today, can develop, can deploy to production hundreds or even thousands of times a day. And I'm only talking about like code changes, but there's like, like we already saw on the previous slide, there are a lot of changes that are not really considered like a deployment. 
even they can destroy your entire system. And this is like a configuration change, feature flags, and so on. And I will say that if in the old days, like the one who deployed to production was usually some IT guy or an ops guy. So in today's modern system, it can be the developer that is deploying to production. It can be even be like the product manager that is now toggling on and off the, the feature flag that impacts the customers. And I will say that like trying to understand what change in today's modern system is basically like trying to look at a very complex puzzle that it keeps on changing and figuring out like what, how did it look like five minutes ago? And, and I tried to do like, um, to, to zoom in on like the three pillars that makes the troubleshooting so hard. So everything is connected. And again, like Exagon does a great job on like distributed tracing because everything is connected and a change in one microservices can affect the, uh, a lot of different microservices that are not even related. Maybe it's not even a first degree of connection, but the second, third, or even fourth degree of connection. And one change can have a ripple effect on your entire system. More than that, a lot of the changes today are done in tools that simply doesn't has, have any audit logs or the audit logs are really hard to, to come across. And AWS is a great example for this. So every time you change something in the AWS uh, console, so basically there are some cloud trail logs that audit you, audit you but like no, almost no one uses them because it's so complex to use them. And a lot of the other changes like changing directly to production are simply uh, unaudited in any other form or way. And the last thing is even if all the changes were audited and even if you have like the AppSecond, which is a great tool to understand the connection, uh, in order to understand really what change you need to open dozens of different tools to track down the change in each one of those different tools. And you need the expertise, you need the knowledge to open all of these different tools and to troubleshoot efficiency, efficiently. And I, I want to give like a very, very like a, a, a short glimpse on how like troubleshooting looks like in today's modern system. So you get the alert from the Slack and you go to Epsilon that shouted at you that you have a problem in your system. You go to Kubernetes trying to figure out what the hell changed here. And from Kubernetes, you go to your CI CD pipeline to understand who, who deployed to production, why, when. And you go to Jenkins, from Jenkins, you try to track down the source code over at GitHub, you go to GitHub, you've tried to understand if there's any relevant commit in the end, you say, nah, I just can't understand. And you ask on your team, like who, who, who changed what, why, and who can help me resolve the issue that I'm currently facing. And in the end, basically you understand that some other unrelated service was the root cause for all of this. And you simply miss the connection and simply miss the change in this unrelated uh, GitHub deployment or, or change. So now let's talk about like the future. So is it going to get better? And, and like TLDR, no, it's not going to get better. All indicators are pointing out that things are only going to get a lot worse from now on. The velocity is ever growing. Like even like small companies today, like deploy dozens of times a day to production every day. And with the shift left movement that the dev team can deploy, the product manager can change things. The QA, the QA, the NOP, the even they can now do risky changes to your production environment. And, and those trends are not going nowhere anytime soon. And the systems are becoming much more complex due, because it's so easy to deploy a new microservice into the modern stack, then basically like everything is smaller and smaller and smaller, like from microservices to nano services and whatever. And, and things are only going to get a lot more complex and a lot more uh, distributed. So the trend that we are seeing now will make it even harder to understand what change in my system that can explain the symptoms that I'm currently experiencing. Okay, so uh, I know like everything sounds bad, but there are a lot of good things that you can do in order to mitigate those risk risks. So the first thing you need to do is, you know, like uh, every, every, every uh, I'm not going to go over like the, the, the 10 like pillars of uh, quick tips on how you can do, uh, how can you reduce the risk? But I will say that the important thing is to have the changes audited and it can be automatically or like using a process and just saying people write it down. But without that, troubleshooting is only going to get a lot more complex. 
And, and I will give like a selfless plugin uh, before I'm going to show in Commodore. Charging can, can be easy. Commodore mission is basically to help developers and DevOps to make life easier for Dev and, and DevOps people, tracking changes and solving issues. And I'm going to go now to do a very live, uh, a live demo on like troubleshooting a, a real incident in Commodore. So stay with me. Okay, can you see like the, my screen? Can someone give me a thumbs up? Yes. Yeah, okay, great. Then, thank you, Jamie. So this is Commodore and this is our platform. And I'm currently looking at a demo account that has basically two services. The screen that you're currently viewing is Commodore Service Explorer. And this includes all of the services the customer is currently running on top of all of the cluster, all of the namespace and so on. So for this like demo customer, it has only two services running inside this Kubernetes, uh, in, inside this Kubernetes system. And this is the REST API and the data processor. Commodore in a high level, what we do is we sit on top of your Kubernetes cluster and we map all of the services that are running in your like cross environment and cross cluster. For each service, we, may, we build a full timeline that includes everything that changed and all of the, the, impact, the impact and alerts that happen for this specific service. And we make the troubleshooting process instead of like a, 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 a very complex and cumbersome process, a very easy and streamlined process. So in this use case, I can see that one of my services is unhealthy, which is, is bad, you know, the data processor, it sounds important. So I'm going to jump right in to these microservices. And this is the Commodore service view. You can see a full timeline of everything that happened for this particular service. On the left, we have some metadata regarding the service. And we can see that it's unhealthy, even it has like 10 out of 10 replicas. And we can see that in the middle, everything that changed for these microservices in the last 24 hours. So I can see that there was a deployment and around like 10 hours later, there was some sort of like data dog monitoring, um, data dog alert and some health issues in this service, which is crap, which is, which is quite bad, right? I'm going to try to zoom in and try to understand if I can see something. But for this microservice that is currently experiencing issues, I can't see anything that can explain the root cause. I know that there was a deployment, but it happened like 10 hours ago. So I'm not sure if it's related. Luckily for, for me, Commodore allowed me to see connection and changes across different tools and across different microservices. So basically I have here the REST API, which is another service that runs on the same namespace. And I can view everything that changed both in the REST API and in the data processor. And I can see very neatly that there was a deployment just before the data processor had an issue. So let's click on the deploy event. And I can see what in Commodore, you can see exactly what changed for each deployment. And you can see what changed both from the Kubernetes perspective, what YAMLs changed. And also on the GitHub side, basically what code changed inside GitHub. And in this use case, I can see it very clearly that the replicas change from 50 replicas to five replicas. And this can very much explain the issue and the symptoms that I'm currently experiencing. So uh, here it was a very like brief and short example of how Commodore allows me to understand what change for my services, how is it currently behaving, if it's healthy or not. And once a service became unhealthy, to simply understand what changes might explain the symptoms or issues that I'm currently experiencing. So I want to uh, leave some time for Q&A, so, so I'll make it short. Uh, and let's let's jump right into the Q&A session. And uh, yeah, Udi, take it from here. Yeah, so we have a few questions lined up. Um, I think I'll give the first one to Chinmay and then we'll get back to you ETL because the other questions seem to be centered around Commodore. So uh, Chinmay, can you see the questions? The first one, how can Epsagon and Commodore work together? Yeah, so uh, as ETL pointed out, uh, that Epsagon does a great job of figuring out uh, what, what's going on in your system. 
And then uh, it essentially helps you pinpoint to different microservices that might be involved. And then the Commodore integration can help you track the changes between the different versions of microservices. And I think like it's a better together story uh, in true sense. Um, it, ETL, can you see the questions? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I can see the questions and I'll try to do to, to answer a couple of comments some of them. Uh, so the question was, uh, can you share a little more details about the Commodore integration option? So Commodore installs a very simple agent on top of your Kubernetes cluster. We support all of the Kubernetes distribution, both on-prem or on cloud. And we track down everything that change inside the Kubernetes cluster. And that means deployment, health events, uh, changes on like HPA and you name it, we track it and we take this data and we show it up very, very neatly for, for, for our customers. So basically it's a very like one minute installation process and you're covered regarding your Kubernetes cluster changes. Uh, so this is regarding the Commodore, uh, the Kubernetes Commodore integration options. Uh, I will say another question, like why do I need the troubleshooting tool? So I think both Jimmy and me try to, to understand like the value of troubleshooting fast in today's modern system. And more than that, I think that because of the shift left movement, empowering the dev to troubleshoot will help solve a huge bottlenecks that are happening in today's modern systems. So, so this is like regarding the second question. Uh, yeah, uh, any more question here? Does Commodore track alerts in addition to changes? So yeah, we track changes both for two tools such as Hexagon uh, but also from other tools such as uh, OpsGenie, PagerDuty, Datadog, New Relic. We try to integrate with all of the modern uh, alerting solution so we can give a full, full uh, visibility over uh, the alerting in your system. Uh, yeah, so uh, does Commodore support multiple clusters? Uh, yeah, we support multiple clusters, multiple environment, hybrid environment, and so on. And, uh... Elad is asking, does Commodore support feature flag changes? Yeah, yeah, I'm happy and proud to say that we support feature flags and launch directly, and we also have REST API to send like custom changes 